hear about the old days where guys were dressing in the parking lot yeah. and, you know, we don't have a clubhouse and, you know, yeah. one of those things like we don't have any grass, we don't have any water. I mean, we don't have anything. We're trying to piece this together with right. like chewing gum and duct tape and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Do you think that going through those trials and tribulations and those challenges of that freshman year of thinking that you're, you're hot stuff and then you're now sitting between a 23, between behind a 23 and a 22 year old kind of learning the game and, and, and all that. Did that create more of a grinder to be able to just go back and say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm not going to be, I'm, I'm not going to be a failure or I'm not going to quit. I'm going to, I'm going to go and go, go even harder. Yes. Yes. I was, uh, I was always been a fighter from when I was born. It's just in your, I mean, I, I, I don't give up. I never have. Um, it was hard to be on top of the world, being a Dodger draftee, you know, two, three, two months before, and also a horrible year, and, and I'm not, you know, I, I haven't done anything, and it's really, I started second-guessing myself, and it was just like, I was, it was a very tough time in my life that it could have went the other way, but no, I, I said, I'm going to come back and prove Augie. I had a chip. I mean, I had like maybe three chips on my shoulder, you know, because not that I, I understand as I grew in the, over the years, of course, and that we've laughed about that, me and Augie, but I, it was a test because, you know what, uh, either I'm going to give up and I'm going to go work at J.C. Penney and screw everything, right, or I'm going to come out and do what God gave me, the talent and the, the ability that I had, or I wouldn't be in that situation, the scholarship at Cal State Fullerton. But the metal game, I went, I was going downhill. So I had to turn that around and I never worked harder in my life in the fall of 78 when we started in September of 78. Because, of course, and I, I wasn't, on, you know, I wasn't, uh, nobody thought that I'd be, you know, oh, yeah, well, I was gonna sit, sit, because we still had the 22-year-old now. Now he's, you know, and he was playing second for the whole, you know what I'm saying? So now he's playing, you know, so I'm second string, right? So I say, you know, I got to do something. And that's when I told Augie I started playing short. I swung because uh, let me kind of take ground balls a short and it's second. I have double chance, right? To go as hard as I can, and we had a chance chance for JC guy, Glenn Robertson was a pretty good ball player, offensively average, very good defensively, and I felt I, I was a little bit. I mean, I mean, offensively, I was more protective. Uh, defensively, average at, for short, you know. And Augie told me, yeah, you can take uh, ground balls a short, second. You'll never play short here. Then you don't have the harm, but you can try. Well, I, uh, I, I, I worked, I was so tired because, you know, ground balls both sides, oh, well, well, going. And uh, I won the position at shortstop. And late, years later, I mean, that year, he goes, I never thought you'd do it. Vada, you did it. I played 30 games at short in the 79, the first 30 games of our season. And I started and I let off and I was doing, you know, and then as, when he moved me over to left field, when our outfielder got hurt. And I did it for the team, even though I didn't like the move. But I, I did it. And, then, hey, 30 games there, 35 games in left field. We won the national championship, you know, the next year. So, so, so it was a complete from one end of the spectrum to the other, from 78 to 79. But like I said, back to your uh, question, uh, the grind was I never worked harder ever, mentally and physically, than the 79. So what did you do other than just – just play more baseball because obviously in, in in the late seventies, you know the weight training and the nutrition is not like what it is anywhere near it is today. No. So what what did you do to say I'm I'm going to make this team and I'm going to be a con- major contributor? Uh, well, I, it's I mean I did do weights harder than ever. I was I mean what, what little that we had it helped tremendously for us, um, but it was just a mental game. I was listening. A lot. I was listening. I was. I was. I was like a sponge. I was as a freshman too. And guys like Mike Garcia and Frank Valoya, I mean, them guys helped me. I mean, I I didn't have no resentment toward my ball players ahead of me. They're good ball players. You know, they're older. I mean, that's a night and day at twenty two and seventeen. It's just night and day. You know, but uh, but um, I I just I just every moment I was out there, I I I just wanted to just do the best I could. Uh, the effort was there. I, I, I'd be first or second in sprints. Uh, stay after for more ground balls. Our little batting machine, the old, you know, the 
the little flipper thing. It was horrible. I mean, it got broke all the time. We had one little bag in it, and I stay there and have people just feed me. You know, I mean, I just worked and worked. And at night, I just dreamt. I visualized. And Augie was a big, big, big on visualization. And I, I visualized me doing very well. Every night I went to bed, what I'm going to have to do tomorrow get into the World Series, we're going to go all the way, we're going to, you know, we refuse to lose. And I mean, it was v- mostly mentally, because I had the tools and I was working it, but it was the mental part. Don't get down. Keep on plugging. Go hard. Show Augie that I can make this team as a starter. You know, I mean, I, mean, I, I wanted, I, I set my goals really high. I, I always have. You know, but um, it was, uh, it was, it was a, a grind every day, but like I said, the belief the mental part of the game, I stayed as hard as I could to to believe that I could do that. So going into that seventy eight fall and then obviously seventy nine, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you look at you go down that roster. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got um, Dave Wedeman, mm-hmm. obviously Tim Wallach. Uh, did you know going into that seventy eight fall and seventy nine season that you were around some really, really good players where this this is dreaming about it and visualizing it and knowing that, uh, trying to achieve that dream, that these are going to be the guys that are going to help you get there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I you know, as a ball player, you know your surroundings and you can kind of just critique, you know, we have a chance, I don't know, we're not too good or we're good. And, um, no, I, I, I believed in and Weatherman and Hangy and... Um, I mean, T. Hud, I know, our pitcher, and Wallet, of course. I mean, he was just coming in his own. I mean, he had a great year, junior year, got drafted by the Angels, but turned it down to come back for a senior year. But, yeah, looking at the at the roster, I mean, I, I never, I didn't break it down too much. I just knew that, man, we we just, in, in 78 for the fall ball, we were 58 in, in two ties. 58 wins, no losses, and two ties. So we were undefeated against all the JCs, and there's a lot of good JCs out here. So going through that fall of 78 and seeing how we responded with each other and the way the coaching staff and us and how we started to build in October, November, December. I mean, getting into January, then opened up in Arizona in, in February. I mean, I, I knew that we had something special here. I, I just know how special it was going to be. What, what gave you that? Was it the, the, the individual talents or was it... You know, we always hear the cliche of you know the, the sum is greater than all of its parts and all that kind of stuff. Was it, hey, we got a we got a future Golden Spikes Award winner, and we've got a you know a, a twenty game winner here. I mean, yeah. What was it? Was it just being surrounded by great talented players, or was it the fact that these talented players were all playing as a cohesive unit? I think uh, yeah, we're all playing together. You know, it wasn't like we looking like we have five All Americans on the team, nothing like that. I I know. I didn't look that deep into that. I just knew that each person in each position, a good pitching staff, good offense, we're clicking, we're, we're executing, we're, we're buying in to Augie, and you have to buy in to Augie and all the coaches. Uh, you just got to buy into that. And once you buy in, it's like a light bulb goes off. And when you see that happen right in front of you, and you witness this, it's like a crime scene. You see it happen in a good way. Like, Wow. I mean, this is good. This is going good right now, and and each person doing their best at their position, <clears throat> and and accelerating to the the best they possibly could, and working hard. And you see that, and it rubs off because if somebody's not springing as hard as you are or the team, you know, you kick them in the butt. And that's you know that wasn't happening too many times where somebody would fall behind, mentally or physically. It was all of us, almost like a platoon ready to be called to go to war. And every day we got in the field, we are at war. And Augie says, you know what? Sometimes he, when we used to play Long Beach State and other uh, teams, he, he'd say something like, uh, pretend that we're going to war. And I remember that one time he, he, he was yelling, and right now the losing team's going to get blasted with a shotgun everybody's going to get killed at an automatic rifle. Just think that way. I mean, he was that deep. And I was buying in like, well, holy, yeah. I mean, it's the level of now intensity just went from a 7 to like a 15. Like going, wow, this this is really intense. And you start thinking like, 
You know what I'm saying? Like you put yourself in your you're in that little you just got hypnotized in the next you know, for the next two hours that yeah, these one of us are gonna die. And it's not gonna be us. It's not gonna be us. So you can understand the power of a seventeen year old to twenty two year old, them 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 all the different personalities all together in war. You know, and, and that's how we approached it. You know, we're not going to lose. We're not. And when we did, we we're in shock. Well, t- tell me a little bit about that. Obviously, that team didn't go undefeated. No. So, how did the team respond to the few times that there were losses? Oh no, we no good. I never forget. Um, we were sixty, sixty and fourteen, I believe, our, our record that year. We're the first team ever to have sixty run, wins and win the national championship. But I never forget Easter, nineteen seventy nine. We're rated number three in the nation. Um, Hawaii is number one. Um, they come in to our park, and it's remember, they're bleachers. I mean, I mean, like high schools. Like, I mean, like we're talking about one set where like thirty people, and the other one twenty. I mean, that's all in a standing room and people with chairs. You know, that was our ballpark. Mel Franks with a little coffee table, like a little uh, uh, fold up ca- table with the, the, the microphone. I mean, it's just crazy. It was great. And we, I never forget, we were playing Hawaii. And we were playing at our place. And they're number one in the nation. And we're number three in the nation, based on our records we're doing. And they come in, and the place was packed. I mean, for our, I mean, where all the trees are in left field. And now it's weird because the baseball field, I mean, like left field now was home plate. And left field. So all the people were around. Oh, I remember going, wow. And Derek Taksuno, their number one pitcher for Hawaii, that signed a multi-million dollar Japanese contract the next year. But uh, he's pitching. We come out, they score four runs off Weatherman, first inning. We're down 4 nothing. the biggest game in the history of part of the program. You know, going number one team in America. And, we're, and we come back and win 12-4. Uh, and it was, oh my God. Now back to your question about losing. Uh, two weeks later, we have an Easter tournament. And we're almost like doing a favor to Chapman to be part of that. Four teams, Chapman, Cal State Fullerton, UC Irvine, and Southern California College. So four teams in an Easter tournament, double elimination for Friday and Sunday, Easter tournament. Of course, we go in there very confident and cocky and like almost like, you know, what are we doing now? I think UC Irvine was still Division Two at that time, correct? I uh, I'm not 100% no, sure. not in 79. Oh, okay. no, they were They were one, but you're right. They're, they're just within a year or two. Yeah. But it was just like, what are we doing in this tournament? Right. It's an Orange County Easter tournament. So we go there and go through the motions. I mean, well, come on. We can, come on. And, uh, well, we lose in the championship game to Chapman. So in the paper, the next, the Times, before Internet, of course, the Register of the Times, the next day, well, that night, after we lost, all you took us to left field, and it was dust, ready to turn you know, dark, and we we ran about 50, 60 sprints. I mean, hard, throwing up people. It just it was uh, our, our 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 parents and, and the, everybody in the parking lot waiting for us to come out. I mean, it was an hour and a half there, you know. And he he told us, "You think you're all that, huh?" You, and this is April. Now we won the national championship sixty days later, but he goes. Uh, you, I mean, that was a, a, an awakening that you never... Next morning in the paper, it says uh, Cal State Fulton, uh, number uh, two in the nation, number three in the county. Or, or I mean, sorry, number three in the nation, number two in the county. You know, because it, it was so embarrassing. It was humiliating. Nothing against that. Chapman, they, they were celebrating for three hours after the game, running around like they won the national champion. I mean, it was... And I, God bless him. And I know some guys there, good little ball players. Tim Flower, Frannery from Padres, he went there. He wasn't there that day. He was at 78. But they had a good program for a Division Two, right? They should never beat us. But like I said, baseball, baseball's a funny game. And it, you know, you got to, you know. So we, that was a tough loss, back to your question. It, it was, uh, I think we needed that. We needed that because, wow, we weren't that, I mean, who are we? Going back to practice it was a tough two, three days of practice before we got back in the league playing. But in hindsight, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to us. We didn't like losing. And then when we went through the season and then we opened up in Fresno for the regionals and we lose the first game 5-4 against Tim Leary. You know? 
I was fortunate. I had a good game. I hit a home run. We got two base hits. Uh,